Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In today's tutorial, we're going to create a simple yet beautiful main menu using the Polygon Dark Fantasy Pack in Unreal Engine 5. If you're working on a game with a dark, moody aesthetic, this pack is perfect for setting the right tone. And let's go ahead and dive right in. Again, you don't need this pack. If you want to support my channel, feel free to use my affiliate link for the Cinti store in the description below. So I'm going to start off by heading over to file and selecting new level. And I'm just going to create an empty level. And I'll double click to open this up. And now I'm just going to save this map and call this something like main menu. And I'll just leave it in my content browser for now and hit save. So now I'll see it pop up here. And now I'm just going to right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. And I'll call this, I'll select user widget and call this WBP underscore main menu. And I'll double click to open that up. And now I'm just going to add a canvas panel over here like so. And you'll see this entire panel pop up and I'm just going to drag in a button for now. And I'll just call this something like a start button. And this will be the button I click to start the game. I'm going to anchor this directly in the middle, zero out my position X and Y. And I'll increase the size of this X to something like a 200 and maybe the size Y to something like 40. And then the alignment, I want this to be perfectly in the middle. So I'll set the X to 0.5 and the Y to 0.12. So I'll hit compile. And now under my button, I'm just going to drag in a text block directly onto my button so it's a child of it and I'm going to call this start text just because it's related to my start button and for the text block I'll just put the padding as zero just so it's completely in the middle and I'll just call this something like start game and hit compile and save and now I'm actually going to right click on my start button and wrap this with a vertical box because I'm going to add some more buttons into this and from here I'm just going to hit control d to duplicate this and now you'll see that it created a start button one so I'm just going to rename the start button one to something like, um, let's do options and I'll change the text to options text like so. And the text itself will also say options. And you'll see that there are no spaces between these buttons. I just want to add padding of five to both of these. So I'll do five here and then I'll go to my options button. Also do five here. And now I want to add one more button and this will be my quit game button. So I'm just going to call this, um, quit button like so. And the text will be my quit text. And then for the text, I'll change this to something that will say like quit game and I'll hit compile and save. And this is pretty much all I need right now. And now with my start button selected, I can scroll all the way down on the details panel and do an on clicked. It'll automatically take me to my graph from my designer graph like so. And pretty much on clicked, I just want to uh, open level and I can do open level by name. And in this case, the name of my default map is actually just from this third person template and it's called third person map. So I'll hit F2 so that it opens that rename thing. And then I hold control A to select all and then control C to copy. And then for my level name, I just copy or I paste it here like so. And then from my quit game, I can select the button, scroll all the way down and then on clicked, I'm actually just going to call the quit game function and it's going to show uh, I can just select quit like so exit the game completely. Or if I selected background, then it would just move the application to the background, which I don't want to do. I just want to quit the game. So I'll hit compile. And for now, I'll leave it like this. And I'll make a little options UI in just a little bit. But for now, I can do an on click just to have it here. And pretty much on click, I'm just going to print string that will say options menu like so. And I'll hit compile and save. And now when I go back to my main menu, I want to just open up my level blueprint. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this blueprint icon up here and select open level blueprint like so. And with my event begin play, all I'm going to do is just create a widget and I'm going to call that main menu widget that we created. And then after this widget's created, I'm just going to drag this out and look for an add to viewport. And the return value of this main menu widget should be the target of the viewport. So let's go ahead and try this out. So when I go back to my main menu, you'll see that it shows my start game options and quick game. If I hit quick game, it just exits. If I hit start game, it takes me to my third person map like so. And this is another project I'm working on. So just ignore that. It, yours will just default to whatever your third person map looks like. And if I were to click options, you'll see it just prints string options menu like so. Now for the options button that we created, I'm just going to go back and create another widget. So I'm going to right click, go to user interface, select widget blueprint, select user widget and call this WBP options. Now double click to open this up. And I'll just add a canvas panel. And this is just going to have some simple text on it. It's not going to have any functionality. And it's going to be really simple. Just add a text. And then I'm going to center this. 
And for the alignment, I'll do 0.5. The X will also be 0.5. And then I'm actually just going to center all my text simply by clicking this justification to the align text center. I will also just make this a bit bigger. I'll click size to content. And then under font, I'm just going to increase the font to something like 50. And this looks good to me. Um, this is just plain text. I don't know why I call it options, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll head back to my WBP main menu and now pretty much on clicked for our options button. I just want to create a widget and now it's going to create that options widget that we created. And I want to add this to viewport and select this as a return value like so. And before I create my options widget, I can just set the visibility of these buttons like so to be hidden so that when I click options, it's going to hide these three buttons and show this. But first, let me clean this one up. And now after we add this to the viewport, I actually want to set the visibility of some sort of back button to show. So when I go to my designer, I can just create another button and drag this in my canvas panel. And I'll just call this um, X button or actually back. I'll just call this red button to go back. I'll set the size X and Y to 100. So it's a perfect square. And then for the style, I'm just going to change the tint to something red. And I'll actually anchor this to the top right just because that is where the X buttons usually go. And then for the alignment, I'll do 0.5. I'll actually do one and zero just so it's perfectly in my canvas panel at the very top right. And now when I have this red button selected, I'll scroll all the way down to the details and on clicked, I just want to remove the options button. So in order for me to do that, I'm actually just going to space this add to viewport apart. And for the return value, I'm just going to promote this to a variable called options ref, which will pretty much just add this to the viewport and connect it like so. And now on clicked, I just want to call out the remove from parent and the target will be the options reference like so. And then pretty much after that happens, I'm going to set the visibility of all these three buttons back to visible and hit compile and save. And now when I go back and actually test this out, you'll see when I go to options, I'll see this back button and I actually want to get rid of that while I'm in here. So I'm going to go back to my designer and I'm going to start this button uh, to be hidden like so. And now in my graph for my main menu, when I click options, I want to set the visibility of that X button to be visible. So I'll drag another set visibility and make this visible and the target will be that red button. And then I'll also add this to be hidden whenever we click the red button. So now when we go back to our main menu and I click options, you'll see that I have um, the red button show up along with these stuff that I created. And now when I click on the red button, it goes away and it basically takes me back to this menu. And I can keep doing this just to test it out. And yeah, this is exactly how I want my menu to work. So you'll notice that when I hit play, I see my third person character falling. And also um, if I click outside, like if I click anywhere outside the menu, my mouse disappears because it takes control of the third person character. So I just need to click create my own game mode. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and select the game mode base. And I'll just call this GM main main menu and double click to open this up main menu as default. And I'll just drag this into my game mode override. And now I want to create another player controller. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and select player controller. And I'll just call this PC underscore main menu. Double click to open this up and on the right on the details panel, I'll just search for mouse and you'll see this show mouse cursor, which I want to make sure it's checked. And now I'll hit compile and save and I'll just drag this over to my player controller like so. And now when I hit play, you're going to see that I can click all around here and nothing is um, my mouse cursor is still showing. And when I hit start game, it's going to take me to my character and I can begin as normal. And if I go to options, and now you see that when I hit play, my mouse cursor is still showing no matter where I click and I can hit start game or I'll go to options first and then I can click this red back button we created and then I can quit the game and I can go to start game. And yeah, this looks pretty perfect to me. And now let's go ahead and just pretty things up. So the reason why I wanted to um, basically involve Cinti assets into this is because I can have some sort of 3D looking environment simply by setting up the scene here. So for this example, I'm just going to use the demo cathedral map. I'm just going to use this demo cathedral map. And all I need to do from here is just set up the camera and add to viewport and so on. And the first thing I'm going to do is just, I just want to set the camera to kind of like face this portal. So I'm going to hit on this button to quickly add to the project. And I'm going to look for a camera actor and just drag this in. 
And I'll see this uh, view on the bottom. And I just want to clean this up a bit. So I'm going to, I'll just have it face the portal like so. So this looks good to me. And I'm going to select the game mode override to build my GM main menu that we created. And now I'm going to head over to that level blueprint by simply hitting this blueprint icon and going to open level blueprint. And now on event begin play, I'm going to do the same thing as I did previously with a couple more steps. So previously, all we did was just create that widget, which is the main menu widget, which is the main menu widget. And then I just added this to the viewport like so. So now in my level, I'm just going to highlight, make sure this is highlighted in my outliner, which is this camera actor. Go back to my level blueprint, right click, and you'll see this create a reference to camera actor. And from here, I'm just going to uncheck this context sensitive and look for a set view target with blend like so. And I'm going to drag out the target and just get my player controller. And after this add to viewport, I'm going to find camera component with the view target. And I'm just going to set this find camera component when view target to true, connect it, connect this like so and hit compile. And now when I hit play, you'll see that now I can actually just view from the camera angle that we set to. And now this is pretty much how I can make a 3D environment. So when I hit options, you'll see this main stuff come out. And of course, you can really play around with this however you'd like. So when I hit start game, it's going to take me to my new level. And yeah, that's pretty much how you create a pretty simple main menu in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, you even learn how to create one with a 3D level or just a well-designed level. Thanks for watching Code of Throw. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.